Hello, my name is Kendra Winchester and welcome back to my channel. The noise you hear is Dylan, my corgi, running around destroying things like he does. And today I'm going to be doing the mid-year freak out tag. So no one tagged me in this um, this year. I'm just going to do it again because it's probably one of my favorite tags to do. Uh, I love doing mid-year check-ins and then the wrap-ups at the end slash beginning of the year. So that's really cool. So we're going to do that today. So the first question is the best book you've read so far in 2019. Now I can't actually tell you that because that would be a spoiler for the Reading Moon Award at the end of this year. So I'm going to talk about a backlist title that doesn't qualify for the award. So my best backlist title of the year is definitely Too Much Happiness by Alice Munro. Um, my buddy read this with Sean over at the Book Baniac and we sat there and just gushed about it. I really love that in this particular short story collection of hers, not only does it exhibit how brilliant she is at short story writing, but the themes in the book revolve around a lot about bodily difference or chronic illness, uh, people who are othered because of physical diseases or differences or whatever. And that goes throughout almost the entire story. There's a lot of chronic illness representation here, a lot of themes around that. and having a chronic illness that meant a lot to me, especially coming from one of my favorite short story writers of all time. I love her. I'm just going to go buy all of the Alice Munro books. I keep looking on Book Outlet for them because they're so brilliant, but also like McKay's has a lot of her stuff. So anyway, enough said, I love Alice Munro. Yes, definitely. <laughs> the second question is the best sequel you read in 2019 and that hands down is The Kingdom of Copper by S.A. Trocoborti. I was so excited, nervous, thrilled, just so much feeling going into this book because I adored the first book. Uh, and The Kingdom of Copper was no disappointment. It was absolutely fabulous. And I had no idea how S.A. Trocoborti would like tackle the next section of her very long uh, high fantasy novel going on there. The next one is coming out in April of 2020. I feel like it was moved up a little bit. I don't know, but that makes me feel overjoyed that now I only have to wait like, you know, a year and a half instead of two years before the next one comes out. So very much looking forward to that. And oh, it's so, so good. Question number three is a new release that you haven't read yet, but you want to. And for me, that would definitely be Elizabeth Acevedo's With the Fire on High. And this is a gorgeous book, both outside and inside from what everyone tells me. I haven't read it yet, but I do know the audio is available in Hoopla and I'm definitely gonna go that route. I just am so excited about a teenage woman of color who likes cooking. It's just like everything, everything I want in a book is here. Question number four is one of your most anticipated releases for the second half of 2019. And so that would be for me definitely Attica Locke's Heaven, My Home, and this part of her like Highway 59 series about this uh, African-American Texas Texas Ranger. I was going to say Walker Texas Ranger, but that's not right. <laughs> so anyway, I really enjoyed the first book in the series, which is Bluebird, Bluebird. I also find it interesting that there are commas in all of the titles so far. I don't know what that means, but it's just something that I think about. So this is out from Little Brown and it'll be out later in August. Is that right? No, September. It says September. It just, yeah. Anyway, it'll be out in September. Very much looking forward to it. If you haven't already, you have still time to go pick up Bluebird, Bluebird, which is now being turned into a TV series. So that's cool. Question number five is your biggest disappointment, and I would have to say it's definitely the sequel to this book, Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson. Um, I read The Vanishing Stare earlier this year, and all of the brilliant like plot line kind of things she had working on in the first book, it just did not work in the second book. I was so disappointed. It was sort of like a lot of them just kind of flopped and all of these different pieces that she said she would somehow have to put together in the second book, she just decided, nope, I'm not gonna do the puzzle at all. And I'm like, really? What are you doing? And that was, that was it. I mean, I can't tell you actually any of the details <laughs> because that would be a spoiler for the books, but that's really just how I felt. I felt like it was kind of a cop out sometimes and I was just so disappointed. The more I think about it, the more I'm disappointed. So I don't think I'm going to be picking up any more in the series. I don't know if I'm going to finish the series. That's, it's, that's just this crisis, this inner crisis. And I don't know what's going to happen. So question number six is your biggest surprise. And this year for me, 
the biggest surprise was discovering West Virginia University Press. And so this is Appalachian Reckoning. It's edited by Anthony Harkins and Meredith McCarroll. It's a region response to Hillbilly Elegy with the movie coming out and all of these different things. Uh, this has been a really important book for me. I'm currently like halfway through it. It's 400 pages. Oh my goodness. But I am, I just love it. I will link some, uh, episodes and some posts I've done over on social media about this book in particular. You can go check those out if you want to know more. They've also published this book, LGBT Fiction and Poetry from Appalachia, edited by Jeff Mann and Julia Watts. And I just received in the mail, with much squealing with joy, is Mountains Piled Upon Mountains, Appalachian Nature Writing in the Anthropocene. Probably mispronouncing that, but like... I don't care, it's so gorgeous. <laughs> this is edited by Jessica Corey, and this is Nature Writing set in Appalachia. So this entire press focuses a lot on issues in the Appalachian area, especially in West Virginia, which is like the heart of Appalachia. And I adore them. Their entire catalog is brilliant. All of them, like some of them are by men, so I just need to go buy those. But I am so happy that I discovered them. And it just brings me joy to be able to read books that I can identify with. Because being an Appalachian is just such a complex identity when you don't live in the region and everyone's like, Appalachia, what are you doing there? And etc. I don't know why they have an accent when we're the ones with the accent, but that's not the point. Point is, I love them. The end. So the next question is your favorite new author, and that one's easy because I discovered Miriam Taves. Now I feel like I could be a metaphor for how America just discovered Miriam Taves because America's really, really slow on the Miriam Taves train. We finally are jumping on, but I absolutely love this book. Thank you to Sean and to Russell and all of the people who said, Kendra, you just need to drop everything and read this book already. Um, I should have listened to you earlier. I respect that. But uh, I'm now on this train to the end. Uh, I also have been collecting her backlist titles from Canada. I will insert a photo of my almost finished collection here. Absolutely adore her. She is the only author this year that I've read and discovered for me. I discovered um, new for me author that I have picked up all of her backlist that I can get my hands on because she's that amazing. I love her. The end. I also own two copies of this particular book. <laughs> I have no shame. It brings me joy and I love her. Question eight is your newest fictional crush. And I wouldn't say she's n the newest crush that I have. It's more of a confirmed crush. Uh, and that is the, that is Praveen Mystery from The Side of Her Moonstone by Sujata Masti. Praveen Mystery is the hero that we deserve. She is fabulous. She is a woman lawyer in 1920s Bombay and she is just doing her thing and living like her life of wanting to be a lawyer and, and just living her dream and just doing all of the things, saving the world, not really the world, but you know, solving mysteries, fighting crime, but in her own way. And I just absolutely love this series. It's just become one of my favorite mystery series. It's also a sequel I loved. I thought the sequel was better than the first one, which is hard to do. So congrats to Sujata Massey for like just bringing it. Absolutely love it. Uh, this is from Soho Crime. So you're also supporting an indie press if you go buy this book. Go buy this book if you haven't already. I'm not just gonna, I'm gonna jump through your screen and shove this book in your face and say go buy it. But really, no, go go buy it. It's, it's great. It's one of the few books I pre-ordered this year. <laughs> So newest favorite character, I I don't really, this was really hard, I'm going to be honest, but I would have to say I really like Vikram from The Bird King. He is a djinn and he does a lot of random stuff and I would say if I did have a favorite character it would probably be Vikram, but just because he's a delight, uh, he's so weird and wonderful and yeah, so go read The Bird King if you haven't already. And I know there's a question later about the most beautiful book covers. This could also qualify as one of them, but since I'm already talking about it here, I figured I would just mention that, that this is definitely one of my favorite covers of the year. We'll get there. We'll get there. The next question is a book that made you cry, and that is T. Kira Men's Long Live the Tribe of Fatherless Girls, out from Bloomsbury. Um, I love this book. Uh, T. Kira Men is such a brilliant person in the way that she presents her story. 
A lot of people talk about how hard it is to review memoirs, and for me, reviewing a memoir means looking at how they told their story. You're not critiquing their story per se, you're just critiquing the way that they communicated their story to you in the medium that is a written book. And for me, the way that she communicates her story is so brilliantly thought out and structured, and I just was so blown away by that, let alone her sentence structure and everything that she does is just so well done and this book was just hit in a lot of I guess personal places for me without going into detail and so I read this book in like one sitting read through the night and was like this is the first book that I've read in almost a year uh, cover to cover uh, this is amazing and uh, that and just everything in this book I, by the end I was just sat there and I just stayed up an extra 30 minutes because I just was emotionally processing this book and it was just so good so, oh, so gorgeous. This one also would be up for one of the best covers of the year, just saying, because it's sparkly and perfect. It's just perfect. So the next up is a book that made me happy, makes me happy. It's definitely this book, Salt, Fat, Acid, Heat by Salman Nosrat, and I rarely buy a book that isn't for work because, you know, I read a lot for work, but this one was not for work, this was for me. And I love this book and it brings me joy. Is it entirely practical? No. Is it like a need? No, it's not. But it makes me happy and that's why I bought it. And that's why I got it for myself for my birthday. And it is one of the most beautiful books ever. Um, the illustrator, who is the illustrator? Uh, Wendy McNaughton. Uh, she did a great job. Uh, Salman Nosra is such a good describer of food and her Netflix documentary is fabulous. Love her. All of that makes me happy. So, I mean, it's just beautiful. It's also very heavy, so I'm going to put it down now. So the next question is uh, the most beautiful book that you bought or received this year. The last three books that I've talked about, uh, The Bird King, Long Live the Tribe of Fatherless Girls, and Salt, Fat, Acid, Heat are all beautiful books and would definitely qualify. But I'm going to talk about a different one I haven't read yet that I'm very much looking forward to reading, um, and that is Rough Magic. Now, I love this cover because of the thought process behind it. Uh, it is designed by uh, Nicole Caputo, and I think that's her, her designs are brilliant. Uh, she works for Counterpoint as like one of their head art director people. Anyway, she's just so talented and you can go look on her profile or she designs books or somewhere and all the different color variants of this cover. So as a whole, the design process for this cover and the work behind it and everything is just gorgeous. I absolutely love it. So that is definitely high up there. There were a lot of beautiful covers this year and I could probably go on a different day and pick a totally different book. But right now, this is the one that definitely came to mind when I was thinking about beautiful covers. The last question is what books do you want to read by the end of the year? And so the answer to that question is so many, but I would definitely say being able to finish this book in print. Many of you know I have chronic daily headaches and migraines, and so I mainly use audio. In fact, this is the only book that I've been reading in print this year. It is 400 pages, and I can only read maybe 20, maybe 30 pages at a time every like third day. So it's a really weird process of trying to be able to read this book all the way through. And so I set a goal to have this read by the end of the year, and that would be 400 pages read in print versus like, well, Last year, I, let's just say I just did not read a lot in print. And this year I haven't been reading as many books. And for me, like my reading has slowed down so much, but I think if I finish this book, I will feel like I've accomplished something just because it's so important to me, but also it's, it's such an important book to my life. So yes, um, I definitely want to finish this book by the end of the year. I keep recommending it to everyone, even though I've only read half of it, but I, it's an anthology of essays. So the first half, all of those essays are wonderful. Go check them out. But anyway, yes, I really love this one. And I'm also annotating as I read this, which is how I prefer to read. So either I read and I annotate or I don't read at all at this point. But it's so, so good. I would also like to read the other books in this series um, of anthologies from this publisher. So like this one um, and this one. I would love to be able to read those by the end of the year in print, but that may not happen and that's fine. This is the main one I want to get read before all of the promo for the movie comes out for Hillbilly Elegy. And I have to uh, weather that storm. But yes, it's just so good. I have so many tabs on this, like you don't even know. 
All right, so that's my version of the mid-year freak out tag. Um, but if you would like to do this tag and you are waiting for someone to tag you, please, you can cite me. Go forth and do this tag if that's something that you want to do. Um, but until next time, that's it from me. All right, talk to you later, guys.